I'm an insurance advisor and also a breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in July 2013. Breast cancer is a, is a malignant lesion that arises or um, a cancerous lesion that arises in the breast. So a breast cancer survivor is a person who after five years of the diagnosis of breast cancer, they're still alive. Whether they're alive with the disease or with the disease being in remission or cured. The incidence of breast cancer among women in Jamaica is 1 in 22, which is high. But not as high as the worldwide figure, which is 1 in 8, which comes from the World Health Organization statistics. The other thing I can tell you from the figures that we have is that the incidence of mortality from breast cancer in Jamaica is approximately 30 in every 100,000 women. Both figures are frightening. There are many types of breast cancers. The commonest is the infiltrating ductal um, carcinoma, which is the commonest type. And also you have the lobular carcinoma. You have a very aggressive form called the inflammatory carcinoma, the Paget's disease, abnormal skin appearances, and there's also breast cancer in men. In December 2006, um, that's when I was first diagnosed, I was diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer, which is a very rare and aggressive type of cancer. My story is not the standard one, in that most persons think of breast cancer manifesting itself as a lump. I didn't have a lump. There was no lump in the breast. However, I felt um, a fullness in the breast, which is something that I normally feel close to my monthly period. However, um, the feeling continued even after. I was very good. I did my mammograms every year from age 45. And between 2003 and 2004, they discovered tiny grains like sand in my right breast. I didn't take it seriously. I thought it was nothing. The lab thought that I should do a test, and they did, and they found it was cancer. So it was found early. Um, well, I suppose fortunately there was no lump, so there was really early stages and we were able to catch it and remove the breasts and that was the end of that. I cannot recall when I got the news how I felt. To tell you if I was shocked, I really don't know. What my main concern was how my son would take it. I hid it from him for a little while, but I told my friends and family. Age is a number one cause, um, ladies over 50 year, years old. There are also genetic causes. There are some ladies who have the BRCA1 and 2 gene mutation and other kinds of genetic mutations. There are also certain predisposing factors such as obesity, tobacco smoking, uh, working late at night and exposure to certain forms of hormonal therapy. Self-examination is important. Know your body. Be intimate with your body. That's how I found out about mine, by self-examination. I was diagnosed a second time uh, last year, March. We started all the tests again. We did the mammogram and we did ultrasound. Um, what we had to do was a biopsy. We removed um, three of the lymph nodes and they all tested positive for cancer again. We should all adapt a healthy lifestyle to prevent breast cancer in the first place. So a full lifestyle change, diet, exercise, rest. Having breast cancer, it has taught me many things. All right? One of them really is that I got so much closer to God and my family and friends. I felt the love. Family, friends, they were all around me. My husband was there. He's like a rock to me. You know, he's just always there. Had I had known that there was a critical illness policy available 11 years ago, I certainly would have taken one out. Because the costs that you incur when you find yourself diagnosed with breast cancer are very, very high. The treatment options are generally surgical and chemotherapy, radiotherapy. 
persons have had their life savings wiped out just treating a critical illness. Basically for me, when I did my first treatment, I looked at, I think it was about 3.5 million in expenses. For the second time around, I looked at 5.5. As a result of the tests that they did, my cancer was hormone receptive positive, meaning it responded to estrogen. So I was put on tamoxifen, which is an estrogen suppressant drug for five years. And at the end of five years, I was done. For my treatment, I did six months of chemotherapy and six weeks of radiation, a very costly exercise. Cost me over four million to do. So for women out there who think that it may never happen to them, you never know, you may be the one in 22. Sajikor has a number of policies that deals with critical illnesses. One of our main policies, the Ultra Lifeline, covers 30 critical illnesses and it has a coverage of over, well, up to 35 million. Right? So, I mean, if you are diagnosed with a critical illness, depending on your coverage, then um, there should be no need to worry. The truth is that most persons don't think of critical illness while you're well. And it's a case of, in hindsight, hindsight is 20-20 vision. You said, had I known, I would have had a critical illness policy, which would have significantly reduced the costs. Why wait? Why not now? For peace of mind, it is very important that you ensure that you have adequate critical illness coverage so that you can be able to pay your medical bill. Sajikor has a plan for everyone. Why wait? Don't procrastinate. Um, lean on Sajikor. We are here because we are Sajikor strong. <laughs>